in radiation therapy, we use different types of, of radiation. Uh, one type of radiation that we use is, uh, is electron beams. Um, another type of radiation that we use is uh, x-rays, so high energy x-rays. Um, instead of diagnostic radiation, where the x-rays have kilovoltage energies, we here use uh, typically mega voltage radiation. So the radiation has an energy that's about 1,000 times higher than the radiation used in diagnostic imaging. And then there's a proton therapy that is used, so there's a, the possibility to use protons for radiation. And then we also use radioactive materials to treat patients in brachytherapy, um, so therefore we use gamma radiation to treat patients as well. We know different forms of electromagnetic radiation. X-rays and gamma rays are just one form of electromagnetic radiation. And they have a very high energy and they can transport lots of energy into the patient and, and, and uh, travel through tissue and then deposit energy inside tumors and then hopefully destroy the tumor volume inside the patient. Now other forms of electromagnetic radiations could be uh, radio frequency radiations or radio waves, it could be microwaves, it could be infrared uh, radiation or visible light as well as UV light for example. Um, all these radiations are not radiations we can use in radiation therapy uh, because they simply don't have enough energy. I mean UV light has the capability to get into the skin and cause some uh, damage to the skin therefore causing sunburn uh, which is you know an inflammation uh, response to the to the radiation damage that's caused by UV light, but um, radiation that has uh, less energy than um, UV light is not causing ionization. They're not ionizing radiation beams, and 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 so we need to really have the uh, we need to really use the the electromagnetic waves that are the high end of, of energy, which is the gamma gamma rays and X rays. Uh, so radiation that can cause ionization is what we're looking for in radiation therapy. The goal in radiation therapy is to get as much dose as possible to a certain volume that you want to destroy. So the tumor volume that is identified by the radiation oncologist uh, needs to be destroyed and the goal is to put as much dose, as much radiation into this tumor volume as possible. At the same time, we want to spare the surrounding tissue, we want to spare tissue behind and in front of the tumor volume. Um, and so what we're looking for is radiation that if possible, uh, you know, deposits as much radiation, as much dose inside the patient, and as little as possible uh, in surrounding tissue. So when we talk about different types of radiation, protons are the best type of radiation, really, in terms of the physics and the interactions. Um, because what protons do, protons are heavy charged particles. So they travel through the patient without depositing much energy to the tissue until they reach pretty much the end of their range inside the, the tissue. And at the end of the, their range, they deposit almost their entire energy in one spot. So they create what we call a Bragg peak uh, at that position. Now by changing the energy of those proton particles, we can change how deep those protons travel and how deep in, into the tissue they will be depositing their energy. So if we have a tumor volume, um, then we can scan basically from the deeper portion of the tumor to the more shallow portion of the tumor volume by changing the energy of those proton particles. The nice thing is that behind the range of their particles, they don't deposit uh, any energy almost. So, so I can spare every tissue, tissue behind the tumor volume is, is getting almost no dose at all. Um, and I can pretty much scan through the tumor volume in a very controlled fashion. I can also scan the beam laterally so I can cover the entire tumor volume and um, it gives me the advantage that you have very little dose, you know, two tissues surrounding the tumor, especially behind the tumor volume. Now, uh, photon beams or X-ray beams, uh, they have an exponential attenuation inside the patient's body. Um, they have a buildup region, so the nice thing about the buildup region is that uh, as they uh, enter the patient's skin, they don't deposit much dose to the skin of the patient. So we have skin sparing, you know, if, if you would deliver uh, a, a treatment dose to a patient, patient and the, the skin would be getting the full dose of this treatment dose, then there would be a very um, you know, severe skin damage that would be co caused, uh, skin would be destroyed and we couldn't proceed with a radiation therapy treatment. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that the radiation uh, has a buildup region bef as it enters the skin, so there's very little dose deposited close to the surface of the patient. Then at some point, at uh, what we call the D-max region, at about 1.5 to 3 centimeter depth in, into the patient, 
um, we have the highest dose deposited into the patient. Now that's not necessarily where the tumor volume is. After this D-max region, we have an exponential fall off. So the X-rays have a slow exponential fall off through the patient. Um, so if you have a tumor volume, let's say a 10 centimeter depth, but the highest dose is deposited at 1.5 centimeters, you may only get 60 to 70% of the dose um, at 10 cm depth. So that's not really a desired um, dose distribution inside the patient. The way we overcome this is by adding several beams that enter the patient from different directions and have them all overlap in, inside the tumor volume. So therefore, we, we increase the dose to the tumor volume and we're spreading out the, tumor, the, the dose surrounding the tumor by coming in from different angles. So when we, we look at freedom plans, we'll oftentimes use nine beams, 11 beams, uh, four to five beams for, for more simple type of treatments. All of these beams overlap inside the tumor volume and uh, come in from different angles so that they don't overlap in uh, tissue that's uh, at a larger distance from the tumor volume. So this allows us to deliver very conformal uh, radiation and, and produce very conformal radiation uh, dose distributions inside the patient, despite the fact that the, f the photons or the, the x-rays do not really deposit energy the way we would like them to. Uh, electron beams that we also use in radiation therapy, they are used for tumors that are more uh, close to the surface of the, of the, of the patient. So uh, similar to protons, they're charged particles, but they're not very heavy charged particles. So they do lots of interactions, they change their direction frequently, and they do what we call linear energy transfer, which means as they travel to the patient, they continuously lose energy and deposit energy in, in the tissue. And therefore, they have a linear fall off. So the, the electrons also have a, a, a little bit of buildup region, but the dose at the skin is very high. It's about 80% of the maximum dose. Then the dose increases to about 100%, and then there's a linear fall off. And again, those electrons, similar to protons, they have a limited range uh, a distance they can travel uh, through tissue. So um, a rule of thumb is if you have a 10 MeV electron beam, it travels about half of this and sent half of the energy in, in centimeters. So a 10 MeV electron beam will travel about 5 cm into the patient's uh, tissue. And we, we would use these beams if we have a tumor that's at 3 cm depth or, or a 2.5 centimeter depth. So we'll prescribe those to 2 cm. And then we have a linear fall off and everything behind the tumor that's at a distance of more than 5 cm from the skin will not get any dose. So for certain type treatments, this is the preferred choice. So we, we can choose between electrons and and x-rays uh, in a typical radiation therapy pardon. Proton therapy is, is, is less available because the facilities that produce protons are very expensive to build. And then gamma rays, like I said, are used in, uh, you know, we need radioactive materials and uh, the use of prachytherapy is really bringing radioactive material into the patient for a limited amount of time and, and we have lower energy uh, photons that will then also um, interact with the tissue similar to, uh, to x-rays.